So I'm Holly Katrin, and I'm going to present on a SARE grant that we completed, introducing a new or a unique um, application of cover crops in a garden market operation. These are just a few um, farm pictures, and my husband Jim and I had a dream to own a farm. Um, I grew up on the corner of a family farm up in northern Indiana, and um, we were for some reason all about it and kind of compelled to own it. And sometimes I think people that farm are like driven to do it. It's like you have to do it. So that's how we felt. So um, we were all about animals and just having fun on the farm and then healthy food. Um, we have seven grandkids and we like to teach them about food and farming and kind of some of those roots. So we purchased a 11 and a half acre farm in Lebanon, Indiana, which is in Boone County, and we named it Hallelujah Acres Farm. And here's just a, a picture of it. Um, we wanted to, our first goal was to grow our own produce and be able to preserve that and kind of eat it year round. Um, and you can see our barn there, but the first um, piece of land that we tilled was just in front of the barn on the side. Um, it hadn't been tilled before, it was under grass. And then you can see in the distance, those um, there were two pastures. Um, there's two pastures on the farm that we ended up tilling up one of them. So probably about a half an acre total. And then beyond that was a small um, woods. And then to the left was a six acre um, hayfield. So we purchased our little tractor and began to work our um, soil, which was the sandy loam type of soil. Um, at that point, the state of the soil was very clumpy. Um, it retained water. It was really hard to plant seeds in it and then get the seeds to grow subsequently. So we began right away to use um, some winter cover crops. We used a mixture of crimson clover, daikon radish, and oats, and we also added some compost um, to the land. So after about two years, that soil was easy to work. Um, it was more porous, um, had a lot of earthworms in it, and in many cases, we didn't need to till. So in that length of time, we just saw this um, significant change in our soil. So do you use cover crops now is one of my questions. And we've heard a lot about the benefits of it, but we are like true believers in it. Um, healthy soil is critical to plant growth. And a sustainable way to build the soil is through the use of these cover crops um, sown after the plants are harvested um, in the fall, usually late summer to early fall, and then incorporated um, in the spring. But one of the questions in our minds was, can cover crops um, do more? So can we do more with it? So in the meantime, um, having grown our own food, in 2016, we became a market garden. Um, our goal was to provide healthy, chemical-free food to our community. And in Boone County, there weren't a lot of um, growers at that time, so the timing was perfect for us to do this, and we were well-received in the community. Um, we uh, participated in two local farmers markets, and this picture is a picture of the Whitestown Farmers Market, which was relatively new at that time. Um, we managed 25 CSAs. We provided some on-farm sales and um, some online sales also through um, one of the um, food hubs. And we had fruit, vegetables, um, eggs. We also had some um, dairy goats. So we did some herd shares, um, offered those. And then we had a really small mushroom operation because we um, learned about that and couldn't help but do it. So <laughs> we had that. Um, and if you're not familiar with the SARE grants, um, I like to think of them as kind of an experiment. So basically um, you get a grant and you're trying to solve a problem that you have on your farm. In this case, our problem was a lot of weed pressure, um, probably, probably because what we tilled up was pasture and um, grass area. So when we were thinking about and learned about the SARE projects, we thought about three different options and they're kind of listed here. 
but this controlling weeds through interseeded cover crops. But then we also thought effective succession planning on the soil would be a good one or control pass through companion planning. So we did go ahead and apply for that first one. Um, the SARE grant really funds research and education projects um, and they keep all that knowledge in a database so that you can go and refer to that when you're looking for information. We applied for the farmer rancher grant and the program's run since 1988 um, and it funds projects and conducts outreach designed to improve agricultural systems. Okay. So our project specifics, um, our goal was to measure the effectiveness of interseeded cover crops for proactive weed prevention in a chemical free low till vegetable market operation. And we received um, $7,500 was awarded to us. What we wanted to compare is the labor and cost to implement our prevention strategies, the weed pressure, so kind of the results of our work, the labor to remove the weeds, and then the impact of soil health um, of using the various methods. One of the tasks that we had to complete was um, choosing what cover crops we were going to use um, for the, I call it an experiment, but for the project, okay? Um, that piece was not as easy as it seemed it would be. Um, you have to look at the cover crops and say, do they use or produce the nutrients that that specific plant needs? Do they conserve or use soil moisture? And do they encourage or discourage insect pests? What is the length of the growth cycle of the cover crop compared to the actual um, vegetable crop? And then when do you plant it? to have that impact on weed prevention. Here are two of my favorite resources, and I noticed Lori had one of these up, but um, this managing cover crops profitably is a SARE um, handbook. And then the cover crop field guide um, we found was really um, helpful in doing this, but it took a little while to analyze this, which kind of surprised me. So our final decisions, um, we took several of our different crops. So we took green peppers and decided that we would try some with the buckwheat as that interseeded cover crop. We would try some with paper mulch and some with hoeing and kind of compare and contrast those to see what our results are were. Um, tomatoes, we looked at crimson clover, interseeded, red plastic mulch or hoeing. Summer squash, we wanted to try the icicle radishes and thought they could also be a secondary crop, hoeing and nasturtiums. And then for the broccoli and onion, um, we looked at crimson clover, plastic mulch for the onion only, and then hoeing. Our process, um, was to first submit some soil tests, um, like the pre. Count the reeds, weed starts. So if you look at the picture um, here, we built a box like one foot by one foot. And in order to count the weed starts, we would place the box on the ground and then count what was within it. So that gave us a way to um, compare, you know, how many weeds were there. Compare the costs and time for installation. Track our labor. And then take all of our data and compare it and then be able to report that out. And then finally submit soil tests um, post. Because one of our thoughts was that um, because we're using these cover crops, um, we thought the soil might improved, improve through that use. And you can see here the tracking sheet we used in our um, garden where we specified what crop and row and the date, what we did, um, the weed count at that time, and then the, the time it took us. So 
So for our results, I'll just run through those quickly, but um, we decided that for, hold on one second, okay, that we would use the paper mulch for the green peppers or be very careful um, how we planted the buckwheat. So as you can see on the picture on the right, in the center there, that actually is a green pepper, okay? So we planted the buckwheat, it grew very quickly. Um, we had kind of a coolish spring, so that green pepper plant did not grow quickly, and we ended up with um, the buckwheat overshadowing the green pepper. So this is just, to me, a good illustration of um, picking the proper timing and maybe the proper um, cover crop. With tomatoes, we're gonna use the plastic mulch for the tomatoes. Um, we did the interseeding of the crimson clover and it, it just did not work out well for us. We had a lot of weed pressure, so that may be some reason for that, um, but overall it just didn't for us um, do the trick. For the summer squash, we had a great success using those icicle radishes. Um, we only used only one use plant, one plant. plant um, planting, and we would use multiple plantings in the future. Um, we were able to use those as secondary um, crops, and you could just plant those several times and take them out, and um, that would work well. And then we did not have any luck with the nasturtiums. Um, for some reason, nasturtiums never grew well in our soil. So we were gonna go back to marigolds um, for some of the pest prevention. We did use white clover in the aisles, um, and that was very successful in fixing nitrogen. So you can see the picture to the right, the white dots are actually nitrogen that was fixed in the soil as a result of that um, white clover. So that was a good thing, and that would make that nitrogen available to the plants. Um, for broccoli and onion, we will use the plastic mulch for the onions, and the crimson clover worked well for the broccoli. Here's a chart um, that kind of illustrates some of our data. Um, on the left-hand side, we're looking at weed count. Um, the yellow is the hoeing, um, the green is the cover crop, and the um, kind of the orange or red is the uh, plastic mulch. And you can see that the as far as weed count, the plastic mulch was most effective, but the cover crop was pretty close to it. In the center one, the same thing with time, and this did include the time also to remove the weeds, so it makes sense that it's pretty consistent with the weed count. And then finally on the right hand um, chart, the cost to install um, the mulch was, uh, the plastic mulch was higher than the cost to plant the cover crops. So that's something to consider um, in your operation. We were able to hold a couple of grant, um, SARE grant field days. They encourage that you share your um, information that you receive with your community. And we had the Boone County Master Gardeners in our garden and hosted them to talk about this SARE grant. And we also worked with the Lebanon High School um, FFA group, and they came out to the farm um, to learn about this. 